Hey guys, welcome to the One Punch Man spray paint. But before it, what the fuck? Hey guys, welcome to the One Punch Man spray paint tutorial. Um, if you're wondering how I go from tank tops to sweatshirts in the same week, that's because I live in a state where the weather makes up its mind as well as I. Fuck, what should I say here? Anyways, if you check the description below, there's a speed painting video in case you don't want to, you know, hear how to do this or whatever and you just kind of want to watch a really quick painting video. Otherwise, um, hopefully you can learn through my gibberish and really shitty attention span. Uh, And what we're going to do now is use this lighter and that same can of black to kind of make a flamethrower to dry this off. Make sure that it stays about like one to two inches off because you don't really want to spray it right on it. Um, it's okay if it lightly catches fire. You just don't want to send it straight into the painting. Otherwise, it's going to burn to a crisp. If you're a beginner, I don't recommend this. I'd say just wait one to two hours, depending on if it still has stick to it. Otherwise, just be safe and try that shit. Next, you're going to want to try and center this. Now, this stencil sheet is the same size as this painting, but I do this so that the character only takes off about half of the painting because then you have all this room back here and down here to do a background. And this way you can do two layers to one sheet and you kind of spend half the money. Also, uh, this is going to be yellow, like all of this, while from here to here and there will be ivory-ish color. I do that because there's a nice little distance right here and it makes it so much easier to line up, especially since this way you don't have to line it up since it's the first layer. So right here, usually what I do is I spray the color that's easiest to uh, cover up, which will be the ivory. And it's okay if you get it in the yellow. Uh, it's not that big of a deal. What I do here is usually kind of Black this off. It's not entirely necessary to cover all of it up if you can't, um, because you can just move it around. And so I'm gonna miss this yellow spray. I'm sorry, not missed. And I honestly don't suggest. Uh, mixing brands. As I said in the Vegeta video. But I kind of just have this can of hardcore. Um, and I just recently ran out of my yellow rust -oleum, so. And it's completely okay if you get some overspray here. Because you're covering it up afterwards anyways. And you can keep doing that fire method. Um, I would just use a clear can or a shader, which is the term that I use for like dollar cans because they just have a nice little mist uh, to them rather than like a full on black like this. Kind of like this. You can get them like 97 cents at Walmart or something like that. But for these, um, Make sure you spray off to the side and then bring the flame over, otherwise there's a chance of misting still. It's highly unlikely that it's going to happen, but you never know. Oh shit, that was loose. Just kind of like that. And you can 
maybe still see it smoking a little bit. But right after you spray it, it will be sticky. It's just that it cools down much faster. So rather than waiting an hour for it to dry, you can just blast it with some fire up here and it'll get a little stickier and dry in like a few minutes rather than an hour. It's kind of like a, instead of letting it cool, it's like rapid heat up, rapid cool down type thing. All right, and then we're gonna, the fuck is that? All right, so there was a hole right here that I cut out and I figured why waste another sheet on just this little area. What I'm gonna do is just do a quick blast of black. This can specifically though likes to spray out, um, so yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm not ever buying Valspar again. And that's why I need to cover the fuck out of this. Let's just, let's just use Vegeta right there. And then some shitty newspaper, cause why not? And then, looks like the usual One Punch Man, which is goofy as fuck. Ah, oh, shit, it's fucking perfect. <laughs> Alright. Oh. And then, obviously... Alrighty. You don't realize how much a small area like this fucking heats up just from using a flamethrower, you know? You wouldn't expect that. For this layer, I use a... Just any red rustoleum. It's like a lighter red. Uh, like this one is sunrise red. But I usually prefer candy apple. Um, but this is, this is really close to the same. And then, you can guess what's next. Ooh! Oh, that shit got flame right here. Got my finger a little bit. A little too close. Uh, gotta get some more over there. Then, obviously, this one will just be entirely white. You can block this off if you want, but it's getting covered with uh, other cutlers, like right after this anyway, so. Then, you know, more And you guys know how I called this a shader earlier? Well, you're about to find out why I call it that. And if you guys are wondering what happened to the pupils, um, I put them in this layer. Just because this will all line up very nicely and those pupils will be like right in the exact spot. Plus, I'm using a black shader, which I can just go a little bit heavier right here. And it'll just turn out just like I wanted it to. So here's why it's called a shader. Compared to this black, one layer, I mean it's kind of misted over, but this is what this black does. Yeah, it's not, not very good is it? Well, yeah, that's why it's duller. So you can spray kind of far away and directly at it, or do really whatever you feel like. Do a couple of good blasts right there, not too much because it'll, it'll run over. And since it's uh, the shader and it's kind of instantly dry, we can go ahead and put on that outside layer because it's not really going to stick at all. And we don't have to blast it with fire, but I will. For this final layer, what I'm going to do is just kind of make it kind of have the look of an explosion in the background. Um, I'm going to use orange, yellow, white. Those are the only colors you really need. 